Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my sales and closing strategies tutorial. If you didn't see part one, go there now and watch it. Otherwise, this might be very confusing to you. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain exactly how to figure out why a specific person will decide to buy from you. Everyone makes the decision to buy in different ways, and today I'll explain how they do this. I'll also teach you how to get your client to say it's like you're reading my mind. And if you ever do hear that phrase from a client, that is a definite, I want to buy your product or service. I'll also teach you how to figure out how quickly the client will buy and how to properly present your product. First, you must understand the topic of metaprogramming and what exactly metaprogramming is. Metaprogramming are the tools and techniques our brains use to reason, gather information, decide on preferences, deal with stress, emote, react to situations, and make decisions. That last one's real important if you're a salesperson. Here is the meta program I use whenever I am deciding if I want to buy a product or not. First, I read reviews online. Then I compare the item to other items I've bought, focus many of my buying decisions on what the product looks like, gather as much information as I can on the product, recall my past experiences with products similar to this product, think about problems this product will solve, and then focus on the cost, then the quality, and finally convenience of said product. If all of those things line up and make sense to me, I buy it. If one of them does not, that might be the decision-making tool that I use to decide to not purchase it. What you have to understand is a customer will only believe your product is right for them if you present using their chosen representational system. Our patterns are built in primarily on visuals, what we're told, and simply through the use of the product or feelings that the product makes us feel. If when you're talking to a customer, they're using a lot of adjectives that focus on visuals such as color, two or three dimensions, locations, distance, size, brightness, contrast, etc., you want to use the same types of adjectives so that they will be able to more easily understand what you're saying. If their adjectives are instead focusing on sounds, meaning loud or soft, sounds, tone, tempo, distance from sound, clarity, continuity, you want to completely focus in on those adjectives. And if those adjectives are focused on feelings such as pressure, textures, intensity, weight, temperature, shape, and emotions, you want to use those same adjectives while you're describing your product to them. You can also identify their chosen representational system in buying by asking, what lets you know that you can believe a product is right for you? Or, do you value a product because it sounds right, looks right, or just feels right? People differ concerning how many times something must gel with their representational system before they make decisions as well. For some people, something must feel right in their chosen system just once. Other people, on the other hand, will require that it sounds right many times before they'll make that same decision to buy. On average, most people make decisions because they look right. These are visual convincers. 15% make the decision because a product sounds right. 3 to 15% make the decision to buy or not buy because they just simply make sense. And 12 to 15% make the decision to buy or not based off of whether it feels right. To find out how many times someone needs convinced, just ask them. How many times does something have to prove itself before you're convinced? Or, how many times do you need to see, hear, read, or do something before you think you are competent in using it? 8 to 10% of people assume something will be right for them unless proven otherwise. These are the people that are very easy to sell. 50% of people can be persuaded to believe anything if you just present believable information in their chosen representational system enough times. I told you how to figure out the re representational system, and I told you how to ask them how many times they need shown in that chosen representational system previously. 25% of society make decisions purely based on their own personal time requirements being met. Once they feel that they have thought about something long enough, they then make the decision to buy or not. For that 25% that are hard to sell because they'll push you off to a later date, this is a tip that will help you make the sale quicker. If someone says they'll get back to you in three months, for example, they normally mean dramatically less time than that. If you contact them in, say, three weeks and reference that it feels like three months since they've talked with you, they will probably agree and state that, yes, indeed, they are ready to make the decision to buy now. 15% of people are almost never convinced of almost anything. These are the people that go through life mistrusting most people. The only way to try and convince these people is to tell them that you're aware that they will never be convinced and that no time will feel like the right time to try something different. So why don't you just give it a try today? People also are persuaded to buy mainly by sorting it out themselves, getting opinions from people they know, or getting opinions from experts they don't know. 
if they sort it out themselves, reinforce that attitude by saying, in this example, if it was a visual client, you can see the quality of the product or compare the product to others through photos. If they're sold by other people's opinions and you have established good rapport, more than likely you are that person. Explain why you think the product is best, get others to explain why it's best, and then if anyone is with them, get those people to also identify and notice positive qualities about the product or service. If they're persuaded by expert opinions, you're probably an expert if you're selling the product, but you can also give testimonials and show them reviews. To find out who can help you sell the product, just simply ask, when making decisions, do you trust your gut or do you rely on the opinions of other people? When you first meet somebody, you must quickly figure out whether the client is interested in the specifics or the general picture. Specific people will think you're trying to trick them if you gloss over features. General people, on the other hand, will get bored if you don't get to the point. Right at the beginning of the presentation, ask, what do you prefer, the big picture or the details, then act accordingly. If you ask, what are you looking to get from this product, they'll tell you how to sell them, more than likely. If a person wants to eliminate problems, focus on how your product will do that. If, on the other hand, they focus on using your product to achieve a goal, then talk about how your products will help them achieve those goals. If the customer is firing questions at you, they want control, so just simply let them have it. If you try and wrestle control from them, they will fight with you. Instead, probe them for additional questions. If they instead are waiting their turn, they want a show. So put on a whole entire presentation and don't stop until they say, yes, I want to buy this product. Then you must also figure out what's most important to this, this customer, cost, quality, or convenience. To me, cost is always most important. But remember, you aren't selling yourself. You are selling the customer who is in front of you. The easiest way to find out what matters most to them is to show them a triangle like I have here on the right. Now ask them to place a dot that represents what is most important. Then act accordingly in your presentation. While you're conversing with the customer, they will either disagree with what you're saying or compare your product to another, probably a competitor. To deal with the disagreeables, just suggest the opposite. Say, for example, here is the perfect product for you, but you probably can't afford it. They will then probably proceed to explain how they can't afford anything if it is the right product. People who compare your products to others just process information by comparing similarities. They like that with which they are already comfortable. Don't ever fight with them and say that they are wrong. If they say something like, a television is a television, so I'll just get the cheap one. Get them to talk about things that are worth spending more on. Get them to explain why they made their last big purchase. And if you have gone over the above questions, you should know exactly how to handle this issue as well. In part three of my sales and closing strategies tutorial, I'm gonna go over identifying needs, establishing the yes set, testing rapport, and why customers say no. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.